guys. If you want to know how to grate masutake, I'm not an expert, but I this is what I learned from the internet. So now in this video, I'm going to show you how to grate them. And I did it again and I found more masutake. <laughs> yep, I'm, so, <coughs> I'm so happy and I think I'm really lucky this time. And you know, the other day when we went out, me and LG, I only found one myself. So today I found all everything by myself because I went to the forest myself. So let's jump in to this. I have over here, but maybe just before that, my name is Esti and you're watching Esti in Sweden. This video is about how to grate masutake. And I'm going to tell you why those masutake is so expensive because they are so difficult to cultivate. Um, in Japan, I know it's a lot of people, uh, they like this and because it is so expensive. And I think most Japanese, they could only afford to eat this like once or twice a year because there is like a shortage of masutake. So very quickly, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to divide this live streaming uh, like um, quickly uh, hopefully everything within 15 minutes so that you have an idea when you pick if you ever find them uh, it's uh, how to find them so i'm going to post some pictures in my story so you know how those areas that you can find them and i probably will be doing a, a vlog about this also together with all my the other recipes so the the video that I that you saw yesterday was a live stream. So it, it was just a live stream, but I've actually shoot the video. So don't worry, the video is coming up soon. And right now we will go and see how many mushrooms did I get. Good, right? So they are smelling. One thing about this mushroom is the aroma of this mushroom, and. Let me show you. This is the bigger one. This is the biggest one you can find. As you can see, the grade is not so good. First of all, they say that the Japanese, because there's been insect already inside here. I do not know whether you can see them. So there's insect already. So usually this type, you know, if we find, we just throw them away. So I probably will not use this. Uh, but some people they might want to do this they might want to keep this because they are so expensive and so difficult to find right so what you can do is that you cut away this part where there is uh, insect uh, and then you cut also vertically ab above here and see whether there are more insect or sometimes you can find worms inside so I think this is probably eaten by worms already so I'm just going to just cut a few pieces and show you how I do that and I'm going to show you how to cut them because there's also a right way you should cut them not just anyhow cut them so this is the worst grade uh, it's the biggest one uh, in terms of flavors for me I feel like it is more harder in terms of the stem uh, the bigger one like this one the stem is more tougher so I'm going to pull out one and show you how tough it is. It feels like you're pulling off a tree trunk, <laughs> seriously. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, you really have to have a sharp scissors, to, a sharp knife to cut this. So this is considered a not a so good grade either. So they are big, but uh, it's... Uh, it's a pity, but I'm going to use it anyway because this one seems quite okay, right? So, the other day I used a cloth, a wet cloth, you know, to just wipe them away on this part, which I find is a bit uh, difficult. And if you notice the grill here, you see there's a grill, uh, like a ring here. So, you can actually peel this off like that very, very easily. So, you can clean them. Uh, the Japanese, they don't want to clean them. They rather use a cloth to wipe it away because they don't. Want, they are so afraid that the flavor will be gone. But for me, I feel like the flavor, no matter how, is still there. You know, so even though you do this, it's no harm. And the thing with this is that when you are uh, keeping.
doing this at home you know your whole house smell of like that and you know my so happy that i found this again share the joy with you right happy thing have to share right so this is not a very good grain so this is the the not so good one and also this one it's quite big but then again you see it's still quite fine if you think about the weight yeah they are quite heavy actually you know there are quite uh, masutake and this kind of we call it the golia mushroom if i'm not wrong in the swedish terms so <clears throat> they are I don't because I cannot compare with the white masutake, but for them the Japanese they prefer this type because uh, the smell is much much stronger on this this one, and um, it's amazing because um, only up in the North Sweden in this particular forest that I found they have this. I've been to many 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 forests before and I never found this mushroom before and also you have to know what are the places that you find them and usually people don't want to tell them and the same for me you know i want to keep that to myself so i probably will this, this the telephone is keep coming i don't know why and and all of this phone are spent let me just put the do not disturb one okay so that it's a wonderful Santana, Santaya, yeah, Santaya. How wonderful, right? Uh, are you Japanese? I'd like to know if you're a Japanese, you know, can you find this uh, in your country and how much is this? Of course, you will not want to pay this uh, big price. Um, but from what I understand, the highest, highest price one is this one, all right? This one. When you cannot even see the grill, the grill yet, as you can see the grill. Yeah, I don't know why it cannot be focused. So this is the most price. I heard. I don't know. Know if this is true. One piece like this could cost between seventy five to um to a hundred dollars. You are Thai. Hey Thai, talking about. Was it true? An elephant liver mushroom, which is very popular in north of Sui, uh, in Thailand. So it looks uh, really uh, not scary, but uh, <laughs> it's very big. Look like an elephant. So this one is the highest price. All right. So the bigger, the smaller it is, the better it is. And because it, when the smaller it is, the more tender the meat is. So what the Japanese do is they slice it and then they want to be really, really careful. They don't want to spoil the, the aroma. They never wash it. So if you wash it, they get very angry. Yeah? I just use a white, white, wet glove to just wipe away like that. So, you know, just a wet cotton cloth and just wipe away. Actually, you can do that with a wet cloth. I, di I think the other day I didn't mention that the cloth has to be wet. So the cloth, when it's wet, is much easier to clean. Alright, so you want to clean on top too. So this is the highest grade one. So if you want to talk about second highest, this is the one. This is uh, slightly bigger than this. You see, it's slightly bigger, right? So this is uh, not so high grade, uh, but it's still, the gear is still concealed. So it's still uh, about the same price, you know, but the best one is the smaller one. And uh, yesterday when we tasted this, I tell you it was so delicious. I never tasted any mushroom that is, I mean Chanterelle is nice, but this is even nicer. Because of the, first of all, it's the aroma. Secondly, it's a texture, consistent. We call it in Chinese kogan. Um, this is the mushroom that, you know, it's like once in a life experience. So that's why I understand why the Japanese like to eat that. 
um, they say that it's good for, you know, not prevention, not curing cancer, but preventing cancer. So I'm going into the forest <laughs> to, to, to just pick and for my own use. I'm not going to sell them, okay? So people are second grade. <clears throat> and I think this is the one that I found. This, both of them are, were together. Let me just see. Are you hallucinating? No, I'm not. They say that you eat that, you'll be hallucinating. No, I don't think so. But this is the... Mm, I don't say that it's high price, but you know, but these are really, really nice. Look at the gear underneath. It's so, f you can see it's really f fresh and and you can smell it. It's so magical. It's like a fairy tale, you know, like, I, it's very difficult to explain to you. It's just, the aroma, some people say it's like gym socks, but for me, I feel like, no, you know, actually, even LG, he hate mushroom. You know, he, even he told me, he said, actually, this so uh, mushroom is uh, very aroma. I said, yeah, it's true. So it's just like durian, yeah? If you like it, you you would. Yeah, it's a magic. <laughs> it's a magic one. So they said it can cure cancer and a lot of health benefit. So, they, you know, they've been researching this mushroom like for 20 years now. So... They found out a lot of benefits. So you call this as a magic, depending on how you how you see it. If you are uh, bad health, then maybe mushroom is really really good because it contains a lot of vitamin D, omega three, omega six, uh, D three, which is really good for us who live in the sweet uh, in the winter. We have very long winter. Oh, chips will will spoil them. No, no, no. Chief, you, you you will not make them injustice because, okay, I'm going to peel up one and I'm going to show you why you shouldn't make chips, right? So, now you know, right? This is a lesser great one. I'm going to just offer you one, uh, one, one piece and I'm going to show you why you shouldn't make chips, for example. This one is already cracked, okay? Let me see. But this one is quite okay. It's, uh, it's really, really heavy. Uh... I'm gonna peel like that okay uh, but I hate to waste this one I'm going to just take one of this okay maybe I'll take one this mushroom is really really tough you know it's not easy to break them you have to get a knife let me get a knife and I'm just gonna cut them gently gonna be quiet so you can hear the sound all right okay I remove the stem so here this all right okay. okay I'm going to just remove this skin like that you know I would say one word tree trunk you know tree trunk <laughs> Because this is a pine wood mushroom. All right. Now, I'm going to be quiet. You hear this, right? I don't know if I can focus. Ah, can you hear this? And this is obviously eaten by worms or insects already. All right. So... One more time, I'm going to just crack this. It's like you are cracking a tree trunk. So the reason why I say you shouldn't make chi uh, chips is because it is almost impossible to cut. Let me just show you what I mean. Okay, when I cut them, let me put uh, this uh, chopping board. Okay, here this, yeah? You can make chips, but then, you know, it will be very, very tough. Unless you're using the fresh, expensive one. This is like $100 per piece, you know. So, 
I don't think so, my dear. It's going to be, the Japanese is going to really scream at you if you make chips because chips is just like a snacks. Because this is a very valued um, mushroom, uh, they want to eat them. Even, you know, if you want to go into YouTube and find how to eat masutaki, there's one video, okay, I see if I can find that video and include that link. You know, the Japanese, they have full respect for this mushroom. And when they eat it, they, they cook this in expensive sake sauce, in no, sake wine. And they let this cook, slow cook in charcoal and in this really special expensive pot. That is how they eat it. And this is how they show the appreciation for this mushroom. So for us, you know, I mean, yeah, you can make chips, of course. But then I think chips, depending on how you want to eat them. Uh, I have tasted mushroom chips before. It is quite nice. But for me, I find that, you know, if you make chips, it will shrink like one, um, one fifth of the size. It can be like this size. And then when you make chips, it becomes like this. All right. So it's too expensive, my dear. You have to give some um, appreciation for this. I'm not saying that you're not appreciating, but I think this is a very rare mushroom. Um, you know, you want to make chips, you have to have like a hundred in order to make one bag of chips. You know, and I think that is not uh, what you if, if you can, if you can find. Of course, you can make chips. You know, but for me, I wouldn't do that. But it is possible if you want to make them and you can cut them really, really finely with a very good knife. Yeah. So this part, I think I probably I tr maybe see if I can use it still because sometimes you can find worms inside and I don't want to do that. I don't want to take that risk. So I probably, you know, use it for something else or, you know, just this, I ever did that before. I thought that, you know, by cutting them and then I can put them into the, what do you call that? Uh, not, not in China. This is from Sweden. And yeah, yeah, it, yeah, agree, right? It, it was strings, right? So I'm going to show you how I do this. Um, I have three bags here, one bag here, all right, two bags here, and three bags. This is for my first day of uh, collecting this. And yesterday I have eaten like almost a kilo of the mushroom, but this is what I do. Okay, uh, let me show you the first bag. The paper bag will absorb the moisture, so it will prevent the, the you know, because if you put them in the refrigerator, they will be moist inside, and then this will not stay fresh. So you want to keep them fresh, you put them in a paper bag, and I separate them. These are the stems, right, in one bag, because this one, can be barbecued so I keep the length and I put them here now see second bag second bag is something that is uh, slices already I tint slices them because this is going to be like stir fried extremely tender this is one thing I notice about this mushroom is that it is extreme and it's not so much water because when you cook them uh, in a dry pan, you hardly see any water. It's not like chanterelle. Chanterelle is a lot of water, but this one is quite dry. And if you bite them, all right, I'm gonna just, oh, this one is not crunchy. But if you grill them and you bite them, it's like you're eating chips, all right? It's like, <laughs> I recorded yesterday the sound uh, when LG and me, we were eating. And you will not believe that this is mushrooms that we were eating. So it's extremely uh, crunchy. It's like cold, good cold gun. So this is for my stir fry. And actually I make uh, pickles like I seen. If you have seen yesterday video, I've only shown you guys how this look like. But uh, it's really, really easy to do. And... 
let me tell you, LG, he hated mushroom so much. And yesterday, I let him try this one. And he tell me, hey, actually, this one is actually quite good. And he keep eating this, you know. I was so surprised. I said, you know, maybe this is the thing. Maybe the Swedish people will, will accept this. So what I do is I cut them into this size, this thin, thin slices. And then I put them uh, aside. And then I have some soy sauce, uh, good quality soy sauce. And then I have some palm sugar. If you don't have palm sugar, you can use um, sugar, uh, depending on how sweet you want. And then I have also added some diffused vinegar, uh, not vinegar, garlic. You know, the one that I shown you yesterday in the live streaming. If you missed it, go and watch that. So that one is a diffused garlic oil. It's actually uh, olive oil. So it makes it so different and this one you have to eat them cold you cannot eat them hot and it is a very good way to preserve any kind of mushroom not just mashutake any kind of mushrooms and you just chop 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 into thin 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 slice cook up the soya and melt the sugar and pour the mushroom in you don't have to saute it for like long time just three two three minutes will do and then you notice the mushroom will be a bit you know it's it's mushroom is like a sponge right so when you throw something in a really hot um, uh, mixture it will absorb all the flavors from the soya sauce so yesterday we eat this with together with our steamboat our rudder grill so it was really really nice on on rice so eaten to be it's eaten uh, cold and you don't have to cook you know <laughs> right you don't have to cook every time so you just take out like the japanese they take out all the cold stuff into small small portion and then they start to eat it is a really smart practical way i find so try this i think this will be a very good um, way to conserve or preserve your mushroom if you're going to keep that for a long time so today this patch that i collected i'm probably going to make this because this one seems like really really a good idea and i'm going to make another two more video uh, i have made four videos yesterday and i'm going to make two more video uh, one is a, a slightly chili spicy thai style and the other one is a korean style so make sure you stay tuned okay so this packet thin slices and this one okay this one is for those that like not so good quality mushroom uh, those good quality this one the thin big one you know i use the good quality one which is the smaller one so you get this really clean nice slices yeah so you can grill them or you can i'm still having are looking for uh, there's not so many ideas on the youtube where people make masutake because this mushroom is really really rare but this apply on any kind of mushroom as long as you are mushroom lover you should be able to make this so this is cut from those bigger one yeah i chop them into cubes because this one is can be really really good if you want to make like a taco you know uh, or maybe some stir fry some rice, uh, porridge even, congi. I think it's going to be really nice. And even though you can make them like a chicken wrap, you know. Uh, you buy a chicken fillet, you open up the chicken like a pocket. And then you stir fry this uh, mushroom. Add some cheese, blue cheese, and then some butter salt and pepper and then you stuff it inside the chicken i tell you this is going to be really nice so very very important let me just show you okay the i i find this way of uh, cleaning it and um i think wet cloth really does help don't use a dry cloth and then just make sure you don't be hard okay Choro, eh? must be gentle mm, like that And you want to preserve this one yeah. into a very very um i think this is excellent I, I still haven't figured out what i'm gonna do with this expensive one 
Maybe I'll wait for my daughter to come back. So I'll cook and let her try. Okay, let me show you how to cut them. Okay, uh, the small one, we're going to cut them into like a slice. Um, let me just make sure this is clean because this is already clean. I seen some people, there's one video I saw yesterday just published. Uh, this girl is from China and she washed them, all right? The reason why the Japanese don't wash them is because they are afraid that the aroma will be gone, which is really true because I think the water will destroy them. <laughs> This is the one that you can cut like um, very thin slices. I think I could go up to four pieces. So this one, I'm going to keep them and maybe barbecue them. This is for the good quality one. So for the bad, le less bad, good quality one, let's say this one for example. Okay, how are you going to cut them, right? So I use a knife and remove this first. Okay. and then this one is also been eaten by animals you can see see there are holes in here so this one you can throw it away I won't want to keep them okay uh, and then you can check also inside if there's any worms there if there is already coming from the tunnel to this it's probably worms already so what I do is that I cut them into half first and then I check them again. Yeah, there is some hole already. So what you want to do is you want to just remove this part. Okay, you want to remove those parts where there are holes because it can be uh, some worms hiding inside them. Okay, now this is okay. I'm going to throw away that. Maybe, uh, you know, you don't have to use like a big a gummy meal. All this can still be eaten. You just need to make sure that you remove the worm immediately when you come back because you don't want to keep them in the refrigerator with a lot of worms inside your fridge, right? So I think this is okay. So what I do is that I cut them uh, into this direction. Like that. And then when you are slicing then you can also see you can also see if these are clean right the gear some people throw them away but i don't mind eating them they are quite nice so i will probably put them into this bag where i have my long thin slices like this so i'm going to keep them here so very very important when you come back from picking mushroom make sure you check them because uh, if you don't do that immediately what they do what they do in the refrigerator is that because worms they like when it's cold also so they will eat up all your mushrooms and they will destroy the rest it will go from one to the other so what's the point right so make sure you come back immediately this is just, I know it's a bit uh, troublesome but this is what we have to do when you are cleaning uh, foraging this is the rule so yeah I think I'm going to just continue to keep uh, cleaning this with my cloth here and then to make sure that there is no no uh, worms before I before I keep them in the refrigerator all right guys I, I hope you guys enjoy my live streaming if you do please support this channel by giving a thumbs up uh, because when you do that you know the YouTube they will like it very much and then they will help to boost my channel so we will have more people joining in 
to our channel and we hopefully can get a community yeah let me just see all right lots yeah, uh, mushroom cake it smell good. Yeah, it is. This mushroom can make pie. Okay, let me just answer to you these questions. Uh, thank you for the. Okay, let's create it. Yes, I'm... okay, making pie. Um, again, I I just feel like when you make pie, uh, you need a lot to make pie. Uh, if you are picking just normal mushroom, it's okay to pick pie, but this. I wouldn't recommend because this is like far too expensive and when you are cooking pie you don't really feel the flavors you will feel more like eating a uh, uh, pastry and maybe the cheese and the cream and maybe the vegetables you don't really feel so much of the mushroom unless you're just making really pure mushroom and remember mushroom Maybe I should make one video on mushroom. Uh, yeah, why not? That could be a good suggestion. Uh, but I don't know if I want to use masutake to make this until I co collect enough. And maybe I'll just make a small, small pie. Because I think LG, he will love it. He, he likes pie. So maybe that's not a bad idea. So this is a channel where I share ideas like foraging ideas what you can do and also why we should eat more food and collect more nature food um, and this is what I feel all right my channel is actually about making people happy making yourself happy stop pleasing people all the time because it will lead you to nowhere treat yourself nice give yourself nice food treat yourself a good time marry yourself right this is what i feel um and i think when we start to eat things for our health and treat it like you're eating this as your medicine you know all those food that you eat bottom line end of the day you know you, know, you will be able to sleep well because you know that you're not putting a lot of uh, unhealthy food inside your system and also, you know, we haven't been shopping so much because um, this time of the year is where I am most busiest. People ask me, how do you manage your channel and you forage and you have to edit video? I say it's all the matter of priority. So when I decided I want to do something I and I want to, you know, not just produce a video for the sake of oh, what am I eating where, what did I do? That is not so important. I think what that is more important is the content, uh, the information that is valuable to you, right? Makes sense? And that is also a, a very important, um, uh, what do you call it, a valuable uh, course, my own course, like learning something new for me also. So in this case, we are like win-win, you know? Uh, when I teach you, you win and when I, you know, learn more, you know, I also win because I felt like it is so important. And maybe when you are getting older, you will start to think, okay, because, you know, I'm 53 now. And if I'm lucky, you know, I could live another 20 years. And if you just think 10 years, it's just like that. And it's gone. You know, you just close your eyes, you open again. 10 years gone, it's very, very fast, especially when you start to grow older and older. And if you're not wise enough and you put too much junk food in your system, you're going to shorten your own life. And then you're going to feel this guilt eating yourself up. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, this channel and I hope you can support them by sharing this. If you find that this content is hey you know as they may not be speaking the proper english but then at least you know i can deliver some uh, some stories from my life and how i look at life and how it maybe helps to let you think uh, look into another perspective sometimes life is not about money it is about how you live and how you want your life to live you know um, I've been pleasing people all my life, um, you know, people around me. And I just felt like, you know, if you, 
you have to take care of yourself first because if you are not strong enough to take care of yourself, you won't be strong uh, to take care of other people. So, guys, I hope you enjoy this and I am looking forward to share my next video. Hopefully, I can do something uh, with this and then I'm going to put up the video as soon as possible. All right. So see you guys. Bye-bye. Let me just see if there's any more question. Anybody? Thank you and see you soon. Lots of love. And lots. Toast is good, yeah. Hmm, of course. I'm going to make a... If you guys are into toast, I have a toast. Maybe I'll make one video to share. But I already have one on Chanterelle. So maybe this will work too. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye.